Hi, everyone, and welcome to Shavlik Protect. My name is Joe Andert, and I'm a technical communicator with Shavlik. In this video, I will explain what a distribution server is and how you use it. So, let's get started. Let's start by covering a few basics. A distribution server is basically just a file share. It is a place that you use to store vendor patch files, custom patch files, XML data, and scan engines. Distribution servers are often used by organizations that have offices in many different locations across the country or around the world. Their purpose is to provide each of the organization's remote sites a local repository for the files used during the protect patch management and threat management processes. By providing local copies of these files, you greatly reduce your network traffic as well as the time it takes to access the files. To better illustrate this, let me show you a network diagram of a typical implementation. In this example we have a business, let's say a hospital, that has a corporate headquarters and two regional sites. By positioning a distribution server at each regional site, whenever files need to be downloaded to the regional target machines, they can be quickly accessed using the speedier local network. Without a distribution server, the files would have to be accessed from either the distant council or from the vendor websites using the slower wide area network. A distribution server is not needed at the corporate headquarters because the target machines there have quick and easy access to the protect council. Now that I've laid the groundwork for what a distribution server is and how it is used, the next step is to explain how to configure the use of one or more distribution servers within Shavlik Protect. The basic steps are to create your distribution servers, define which machines will use the distribution servers, and then create synchronization jobs to update the servers with the latest files. You start by creating the distribution servers. This is done by selecting Tools, Operations, and then selecting the Distribution Servers tab. For this example, I've pre-configured three different distribution servers, one for each of our sample regions and one backup server. Let's look at how the distribution servers are configured. Each regional distribution server is defined by specifying the path to the repository as well as the credentials used to access the repository. This is done twice for each distribution server. The top half of the dialog specifies the location and the authentication method that the target machines will use when accessing the server. You can choose from three different authentication methods, but by far the easiest and most common method is UNC. The bottom half specifies the credentials that the console will use when connecting to the same location. You can easily verify the configuration by clicking Test Connection to make sure everything is set up correctly. It is always a good idea to configure a backup distribution server. You can create two distribution servers for each region, but if you have many regions, the number of distribution servers can grow pretty quickly. Another option is to use the patch download directory on the Protect Console as your backup distribution server. This directory is defined on the Downloads tab. You use the console's operating system to share this directory and then secure it by assigning credentials. When you create the backup distribution server, you specify that path and the credentials used to access it. Access to this server will be slower for your regional target machines than their primary server, but you may not care since it's only a backup server and ideally will not be used very often. If you need your backup distribution server to contain more than just patch files, you can create a synchronization job that will copy additional components such as scan engines and XML data files to the patch directory, and I'll talk about the synchronization process in a moment. The next step is to define which set of machines will use each distribution server. If we go back to our sample network diagram, 
The machines in region A use the 10.x range of IP addresses, while the machines in region B use the 192.x address range. So, in the IP ranges section of the distribution servers tab, I've mapped these address ranges to their respective distribution servers. I've also specified the corporate server as the backup server for each location. You'll need a way to keep the distribution servers current with the latest files, and you do this by defining a scheduled synchronization process. When you synchronize a distribution server, it means you are updating the server with the latest files contained on the console. These files can be patches, threat data, and XML data files, and you can specify exactly which components will be synchronized. In this example, I've defined a patch file synchronization job for each distribution server that will run automatically at 6 a.m. every weekday morning. When this job is run, it will copy all the current patch files from the console to the distribution server. If you want to synchronize more than just patch files, simply specify in the synchronization component box which files you want to include, select the desired distribution server, and then click Add Scheduled Sync. I don't need this synchronization job for this demo, so I'll click Cancel. You should make sure the console contains the latest files before a synchronization job begins. One easy way to do this is to configure the program to automatically download engines and definitions prior to a synchronization job. You do this on the Downloads tab. I don't have anything predefined here, but the bottom section is where you would configure your scheduled downloads. You can also run each synchronization job manually. This initiates a synchronization right now, so you don't have to wait for the next scheduled synchronization interval. Let me show you how this works. As you can see here, the folder that is representing the Region A distribution server is currently empty. Let's see what happens if I go back and run the synchronization job right now. The distribution server now contains a copy of all the patch files that have been previously downloaded to the console. The final step is to tell the Shavlik Protect deployment engine that the patches will be downloaded by the target machines from their respective distribution server rather than being pushed to the target machines from the console. This is done in the Distribution Server tab of your deployment template. As shown here, this template is specifying that each target machine will use its IP address to determine which distribution server to use. And if you remember, I mapped each server to a specific IP range when I configured the distribution servers. I'm also specifying the use of a backup server. In addition, it's considered a best practice to use the vendor websites as a fallback in case neither distribution server is available. And finally, if our timing is off, and a patch scan finds a missing patch that does not yet reside on the distribution servers, this will keep retrying to locate the patch with the idea being that a scheduled synchronization job will bring the distribution server up to date by copying the patch from the console to the distribution server. I just covered a lot of material and that should provide you with more than enough information to get started with distribution servers. There are, however, a few other points I'd like to quickly cover. First, there is no limit to the number of distribution servers you can use. Second, distribution servers are available with all editions of Protect. There are no special license requirements. Third, there are some port requirements when using distribution servers. Please consult the help system for complete details. And finally, most everything I've covered up until now relates to agentless scenarios. There are a few points to consider when using distribution servers with agents. The default setting for an agent policy is to look for patch, engine, and data files on the vendor websites. 
If your agent machines are located inside a firewall, however, you would rather have them accessing a local distribution server instead of the Internet. In your agent policy, you can specify that you want your agents to use a distribution server and that they should do so based on the agent machine's current IP address. If an agent machine is outside the IP ranges assigned to your distribution servers, you can always use the vendor websites as a backup source. An agent that utilizes a distribution server for patch deployments will do all of its major traffic on the local LAN and only a fraction on the WAN, reducing the impact on lower bandwidth connections. And finally, distribution servers are strongly recommended if you have agents that contain a threat task. The threat definition file used by a threat task is rather large and using a distribution server to store that file will greatly improve the download performance for your agents. For more information about Shavlik Protect, go to the web URL shown here. These two web pages contain additional video tutorials as well as a large number of Shavlik Protect user guides. Thanks for watching.